let's talk about lumbar disc pain, okay? Now, in your little discs in between your vertebra, you have a couple parts. You have the center part, which is a little gel-like center, like a jelly in a donut. That's called the nucleus palposus, okay? And then you have these little rings around that center disc. That part is called the annulus fibrosus. And then on the top of the disc, in the bottom of the disc, you have vertebral end plates that connect the disc to the vertebra. Okay? Now the little center part, called the nucleus palposus, is like a gel, and it's composed mainly of something called protoglycans. Okay, now what's protoglycans? And glycans basically is a type of carbohydrate. So we have a mixture of protein and a carbohydrate. And so in that center part of the disc, we have 65% protoglycans and 15% collagen, which is protein, versus the outer annular fibrosis part, which is mostly collagen, okay, like 70% collagen and only 20% protoglycogen. And so the question is, why is that in, inside part um, mostly protoglycogens. What, what's significant about that? Well, anytime you have carbohydrates, you have also the ability to retain more water. So one of the reasons why that center part needs to be uh, mainly carbohydrate is to retain some of that fluid. Of course, there's other reasons too, but that inside needs to be more of a gel so you can actually move and pivot and have motion. And this is also why when you wake up in the morning, you're actually two centimeters taller than when you went to bed because this fluid tends to kind of seep out. And then all night long when you're resting, it can actually come back and you can expand a little bit. This is also why as you age, you get shorter and shorter because the discs become dehydrated. And so the outer rings of that disc are mostly protein because they don't need to have as much water. They just need to be very, very strong to protect and keep the gel in the center part, to keep the jelly inside the donut, right? And what's really amazing about this outer ring of this disc is that it's super, super strong. It's actually stronger than bone. But what happens when you have a herniation is you have this inner gel part, the jelly, starts leaking out and starts breaking through the annular um, next part of the disc, the annular or annulus fibrosis, okay? So you can have a protrusion within the disc that does not extend and even touch the nerve root at all. And so a herniation can be small enough where it just breaks through the next layer of the disc, okay, where those little annular fibers are. Now, when you have this gel that breaks through the next layer, um, at first, you won't even feel it. You'll have no pain, okay? But over time, it starts to degrade, and it becomes inflammatory, and it becomes more acidic. And there's nerve endings in this little annular part of the disc, and that's where you get pain. And I'm talking about 40% of all back pain is discogenic, and that's what they call it. And so this herniation is not even touching the nerve root. All this pain is occurring within the disc itself. And normally it should heal, but sometimes it doesn't heal. The thing that you need to know is there's other reasons why this disc pain can persist. And uh, there's still a lot of unknowns about this, but I think that most of these disc problems originate from a mechanical problem, and then they get worse with a dietary problem, which I'm gonna get into. But I remember when I was in high school, I did something really, really stupid. I went to the gym and I started to do squats, okay? And I squatted 425 pounds without anyone spotting me. And I get to the bottom. And when I pushed off, I had so much force down in my low back, I felt a little shift go on. No pain, but a little shift, right? So I was able to squat 425 pounds. And I go home that night, I go to bed, and I woke up, I could not even get out of bed. And so and that was the start of my disc problems. And of course, if we add on that, all the other injuries and all the bad diet stuff that I did, I have to still be very careful or my low back will start to haunt me and, and uh, let me know that it's still there. But here's what I think that happens. After the mechanical initial injury, you can then worsen it with inflammatory foods, okay? People with type two diabetes, and metabolic syndrome are at risk for disc herniation, okay? Also, chronic hyperglycemia, which means the consumption of a lot of carbohydrates over a, a period of time, starts to create these, um, these sticky proteins called advanced glycated 
end products, which starts to clog everything up and create a lot of inflammation and a lot of free radicals. And that can increase the risk of more herniation. So I think a lot of people with low back pain have this situation. And what they don't know is that their diet is contributing to more disc problems and the prevention of it healing correctly. So having a protrusion is not simply about having some fall or injury and then now you have a disc protrusion. It's also the addition of other inflammatory factors. So this is what I'm going to recommend if you have low back pain and you may find that things just clear up without the need hopefully of getting surgery. Number one, eliminate inflammatory foods. Okay, I'm talking about sugar. I'm talking about refined carbohydrates, flour products, and vegetable oils especially, omega-6 fatty acids like corn oil, canola, soy, cottonseed oil. Very, very important to eliminate those from the diet. You may find your low back pain clears right up. Number two, start doing fasting and intermittent fasting, okay? Number three, start consuming omega-3 fatty acids, okay? Fish oils, cod liver oil, very, very important. You want a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. Most people have like a 20 to 1 ratio. They have way too many omega-6 fatty acids and they don't realize that's, that's just killing their back and their discs. And the last thing I would highly recommend to do would be to take vitamin D3, at least 20,000 IUs. Vitamin D is a natural anti-inflammatory and it can greatly help your back pain, not just from reducing inflammation, but if you're deficient in vitamin D, one of the first places you're gonna notice a symptom is in your lower back, okay? Make sure you take some magnesium with that because magnesium also helps relax the muscle around the lower back. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.